On the 3rd of May, 2021, I uploaded a video to my channel that covered an insane five-way tie to the frame for the world record in This Is The Only Levels Pauseless and Glitchless category. First Holly Mirrors, then DHA, then Chromo, then Lucky Hamburger, and finally the 1C. They had all managed to beat this flash game in exactly 2 minutes, 24 seconds, and 675 milliseconds. Made up of 30 identical-looking stages, each of them having a different gimmick, the game has a gate in stage 25 that only opens every 10 in-game seconds. All five of these runners had managed to achieve the 2-minute cycle and squeeze through on the first possible frame, meaning that every single runner was tied to the frame entering stage 26. With extremely basic, fixed acceleration platforming ahead, each runner stuck exactly together on the last five stages, leading to the five-way record tie. There were 17 other runners that had attained a two-flat cycle in a run, most just barely managing to squeeze through the stage 25 gate before it closed again, but these five were the only ones that had likely played the game to absolute perfection. For any time to be saved off this record, there were only two possibilities. Find a new exploit or movement mechanic to shave off a couple frames in the last five stages, or somehow save enough time in stages 1 through 25 to make it to the gate at the 1 minute 50 cycle. There were a few levels where time could certainly be saved with perfect execution, like stage 13's left-right march and stage 16's keep hitting it. However, with the top runners at most having just a few seconds to spare once they reached the stage 25 gate, it was believed by most that not even a task with frame-perfect mashing and execution would be able to achieve it. If the five-way tie were to be broken by a human, it would almost certainly be because of a new time save being found in the last five stages. However, while people continued to look for time saves to test the theoretical possibility of a 150 cycle, the 224.675 tie would further show its might. Holy shit! Oh my god! On June 30th, 2021, the insane five-way tie in This Is The Only Level became an even crazier seven-way tie for the record. Cryptopolis and an average Arceus had joined the ranks of possible perfection, and the message that the tie was completely unbreakable was just further reinforced. Speedrunners had likely entered the last five stages of the game perfectly dozens of times, and they were just unable to do any better. However, without any task tools or even a way to easily practice certain levels in the game, there was still so much ambiguity up in the air about whether this was a certainty or not. Thankfully, in early July, Flash modding expert Sage, who had created tons of useful tools for games in the Red Ball series, released a simple practice hack that allowed any stage in the game to be entered and repeated using certain key combinations. The creation of this hack was quite difficult, since Sage was more accustomed to the object-oriented ActionScript 3 programming language that the Red Ball games ran on, rather than the more procedural ActionScript 2. But this hack was eventually improved to the point where the game could be paused and frame advanced through, effectively allowing for tasks of each individual stage in the game to be created. Many refinements in stages 1 through 24 were able to be found with this tool, but stages 26 through 30, the ones that actually mattered for saving time in a full game run, still remained completely unimproved. However, on October 1st, 2021, a breakthrough would finally come. On that day, speedrunner Cryptopolis, the sixth runner to achieve a 224.675, uploaded a video showing frame-advanced gameplay on the practice hack in stage number 3. The level was completed in 2.025 seconds. Normally, taking the bottom route in this stage with a pipe clip at the start takes 2.075 seconds. Two frames had just been saved. You see, speedrunners had noticed that the elephant actually moves slightly faster in the air than it does on the ground. By simply incorporating a tiny, precise jump at the end of the level, small enough to avoid hitting the ceiling, it was possible to attain this two-frame time save. However, since this is just stage 3, way before the stage 25 gate, why would this even matter? 
Well, the gimmicks in stages 26 and 27, a falsely closed gate, and a credits requirement respectively, place the elephant on the exact same path as the one in stage 3. Incorporating the new time save into both stages, the best possible time in This Is The Only Level had just become a 224.575. In a mad dash to try to shatter the tie, new and old TTOL runners booted up Adobe Flash Player and started pouring in attempts. DHA, who had tied the 224.675 back in May of 2018, drew first blood. 224.650. One of the four possible frames were shaved off. After three years, nine months, and 24 days, Ollie Mears' unbreakable time had finally been beaten. Cryptopolis struck back two days later with a 224.625, and DHA reclaimed the throne again the very same day with a 224.6, appearing to be just one frame off the new theoretical maximum for TTOL. With the door of opportunity left wide open, someone needed to close the gap. And in the very early hours of October 6th, 2021, an average Arceus, the last person to tie the 224.675, did just that. Arceus was thrilled with the run that he achieved, though the description did read that it was now time to get a 224.550. You see, on October 2nd, a speedrunner named River had found a way to get through the gate in stage 25 a single frame faster by utilizing a large ground bounce after taking a fall from the very top of the stage. A few hours after Arceus's record, DHA was actually able to pull this off in an actual speedrun on the 210 cycle. But he realized that performing this strat actually made it impossible to get a jump through the pipe at the start of the next stage, making it ultimately lose time in the context of a full game run. Therefore, Arceus had indeed maxed out TTOL for the strategies that were known at the time. However, the .575 goalpost would be successfully moved that very same day with another ingenious discovery. In my first This Is The Only Level video, I mentioned that the game was essentially absent of any acceleration while moving left and right, one of the key contributing factors in why the game had been possibly maxed out by so many different people. Well, one thing that often gets overlooked is that This Is The Only Level actually does have some form of acceleration present, vertical acceleration due to gravity. Keeping this in mind, Cryptopolis realized that by jumping at the front of the middle platform and then hitting the button while falling, the elephant would reach the ground below faster than just by running over it. This did require the right button to be released for a few frames, losing some time up front, but since the elephant was moving considerably faster downward on the plane of the button than it would be otherwise, it ultimately saved up to two frames. It was possible to pull off this strat in stages 28, 29, and 30, moving the theoretical maximum all the way down to a 224.425. But due to the immense difficulty of the strategy, the zoomed in camera in stage 28, and the pitch black setting of stage 30, it was only really feasible to perform the strategy in stage 29 in an RTA setting. With his sight set upon the record, DHA knew what he had to do if he wanted to reclaim it all for himself. He had to hit this strategy at the very end of an already immaculate run. And on October 9th... <laughs> Oh my god. 224.550. It was one frame off the theoretical maximum for a single button jump run, but that didn't really matter. He had gotten the one frame to rule them all. Untied world record. Fast forwarding to the present day, this is still where the record stands today. However, this is not where our story ends. 
When I started researching for this video back in February, there was an enormous amount of ambiguity as to whether the 150 cycle in TTOL was even theoretically possible or not. Multiple inaccuracies in how the practice hack functioned were found, and the spreadsheet that kept track of the best time ever achieved in each level through frame advancing was found to have several math errors. For the 150 debate to finally be settled, there was only one possible solution. Find a way to make a full game TAS on the game's original SWF file. If you have seen my Redball TAS Explained video, you will know that Flash game TASs of Action Script 2 games like TTOL have been successfully created by combining a Flash game emulator, either GNASH or Ruffle, with the Linux tasing utility known as LibTAS. TTOL did successfully run in Ruffle, but when pairing it with LibTAS, the game would just fail to open. At a dead end, I decided to ask Luke Saward for help. Y yes, that Luke Saward. Since I knew that he had successfully created a task of another Action Script 2 game known as Ooh On You Fetch a Fruit. It's an extremely serious speed game, and we will get to it in a later video, <laughs> don't worry. TTOL actually did run for Luke and LibTAS, and after hours of debugging, we found out that it wasn't working for me or anyone else due to some random NVIDIA Linux graphic driver issue. <laughs> Classic. Anyways, with a way to accurately task the entire game, I tasked Roblox8192, a glitch hunting and tasking legend that has authored a considerable portion of the tasks for the various Redball games, with finally answering the theoretical 150 cycle question. With DHA reaching the stage 25 gate at roughly 158.625, 7.625 seconds, or 305 frames, needed to be shaved off for a 150 cycle to barely be achieved. Roblox started by replicating any strategies that were used on the frame advanced and RTA level records recorded on the TTOL perfect timesheet, times achieved by runners like DHA, Cryptopolis, River, and Chromo. In stages 1 and 2, three frames were able to be saved by incorporating the button jump and a sooner acceleration at the start. A frame was shaved off in stage 4 from clicking the goal a frame earlier, six frames were shaved off in stage 6 thanks to the usage of a much more optimal route, three frames were shaved off in stage 7 thanks to a larger bounce off the spikes and a more optimal landing spot on the button, and a frame was shaved off in stage 8 by performing the jump a frame earlier. Now, in stage 9, where the elephant is controlled by mouse movement and the left click button, DHA actually lost a ton of time due to him completely missing the button on his first go, requiring a quick recovery. This had no impact on his run since he still comfortably made it through the two flat cycle gate on the first possible frame, but it allowed the task to save a monstrous 1.85 seconds on the stage, or 74 frames compared to this run. 10 frames were saved on the headwind stage thanks to more optimal jumping, and since the next stage doesn't have a pipe jump, the task actually saved 6 frames by combining more optimal starting movement with the button jump. 6 frames were saved in stage 12 thanks to a pipe clip, bringing the task to the most infamous stage in TTOL speedrunning. Left Right March. For speedrunners, this stage represents an enormous barrier for achieving a 2 flat cycle. Without being able to mash the left arrow key at least 10 times a second while holding down the right arrow key, it is almost impossible to hit the cycle in stage 25. DHA's rapid mashing allowed him to complete stage 13 in around 5 seconds, indicating that the game was registering around 11.5 key presses per second. But for the task, the left arrow key was able to be programmed to perfectly press and unpress every other frame. With this perfect 20Hz smashing, the task saves 2.025 seconds over DHA, or 81 frames. In stage 14, 7 frames are saved thanks to a more optimal start and button press. And in stage 15, 2 frames are saved thanks to the addition of a ground jump. That brings us to keep hitting it, a stage where the button has to be pressed and depressed 5 times for the gate to drop. With 4 perfect left and right presses combined with a button jump, the task saves 33 frames. 3 frames are saved in stage 17 with a button jump and an earlier acceleration, 8 frames are saved in stage 18 from a more optimal route, 1 frame is saved in 19 from the more optimal start, 24 frames are saved in 20 thanks to a button jump and the lack of a small movement mistake that DHA had in his run. With all of that, 33 frames still need to be saved in the next 4 stages if the 150 cycle is to be made on the last possible frame. Thankfully, 17 frames are saved on in-between gravity thanks to a more optimal path being taken, 16 to go. 
four frames are saved on Mime's Folly by avoiding hitting the top platform, allowing the elephant to fall faster. 12 to go. Next up is Center Keyboarder. A level where the only apparent gimmick is that the movement keys are T, F, G, and H instead of W, A, S, D or the arrow keys. However, the task does not perform the button jump here because there was a slight programming oversight when adding in this control scheme. Pressing the jump key gives a full jump every single time, no matter how long it is pressed for. This, in turn, makes the button jump actually slower for this stage, something which was not accounted for when the perfect time for this stage was initially determined. Thankfully, with DHA accidentally landing on this platform instead of falling down before it, the TAS is able to score 15 frames in this level. And that means... Point two hundred nine point three five seconds faster than DHA's world record. With essentially perfect execution, the task made it through the gate with just three frames to spare. Or four if you include the frame that requires a jump over the gate, which loses five additional frames. The task then saves three and two frames in stages 28 and 30 respectively by incorporating button jumps, with the extra frame in 28 resorting from DHA jumping a frame late at the start of the level. This appears to place the two-flat cycle limit at a 224.425, the same limit that was determined before the task was even created. Personally, I do believe that this is a time that will be achieved one day. Performing two more perfect button jumps at the end of a two-flat cycle run does seem like a monstrous task, especially considering the visual circumstances that they have to be performed in, but if DHA was able to successfully pull off the one in stage 29, it feels like it's only a matter of time before people start going for the other two. However, with there currently being, at most, four frames of wiggle room compared to absolute perfection, the human viability of a 150 cycle is almost non-existent. Completely disregarding all of the button jumps and other insanely difficult strategies that need to be performed, the absolute largest obstacle standing in speedrunners' paths is good old stage 13. When I started working on this video, nobody else had really done much better than DHA's 4.975 second completion of the stage. While DHA's effective 11.5 clicks per second on a keyboard was impressive, especially considering flash player input handling nonsense which we will get to in a second, I felt like I needed to enlist the help of an expert to get a better gauge of the true human potential on this level. So, I decided to ask one of the fastest button mashers in the entire speedrunning community. My friend and Super Mario Brothers speedrunning extraordinaire, Lei Kuki. Yeah. Oh my god, I got it again. Within just a few hours, Lei Kuki shared that he had gotten a 4.325 second completion, then a 4.225 second completion, and finally, a 4.025 second run. This was certainly an incredible accomplishment, placing him almost a second ahead of DHA's completion, but it was still far from what he was capable of. Leikuki was able to mash a single button on an NES controller 24 times in a single second using two fingers. But the highest CPS that TTOL could seem to give him was around 14. So what was the holdup? For starters, TTOL doesn't just require 20 hertz mashing or better to score a perfect left-right march. The button has to be perfectly pressed and depressed every other frame. This is monumentally more difficult than just pressing a button at least 55 times in 2.75 seconds, as the rate of your presses must stay almost perfectly consistent the entire time with no fluctuations, and how long each press lasts for also matters. Secondly, the way that Adobe Flash Player handles inputs is incredibly flawed, causing many key presses to just not register entirely. You see, Flash Player handles inputs by checking which buttons are currently held down at the start of each frame. If a button is pressed in that moment, the game acts accordingly. The problem with this is that if a button press starts and ends in the span of a single frame, Flash Player will just miss the input entirely. You can see that if I simply flick the spacebar key while playing Red Ball 4, the majority of the jumps are just not happening. 
even though my computer is recognizing the key being pressed. With TTOL running at 40 frames per second, any input that lasts shorter than 25 milliseconds has the potential to be completely missed. At least, that's what I would say if Flash games actually ran at their intended frame rate 100% of the time. In reality, the time that each frame lasts can vary significantly, and though a game may average 40 frames per second, that doesn't mean that each frame is going to last exactly 25 milliseconds. If this all wasn't bad enough, Laikuki noted that the keyboard that he uses, a Logitech G413 Carbon, would generate key presses that were much longer than the actual amount of time that he was pressing the button likely due to some form of debouncing mechanism, which was definitely causing a bunch of presses to last for two frames when they otherwise would have only lasted for one. I even tried getting Laikuki a completely different keyboard that was more positively viewed and appeared to have more accurate input handling, but for whatever reason, it actually ended up being worse, so it was promptly returned. So, I guess the main takeaway is that keyboards suck, drivers suck, and Adobe Flash Player sucks. However, despite all of that working against him, Leikuki was able to get a video of this performance on Left Right March. Yes! Recorded sub 4! Oh my gosh, dude! And then there was this one. Oh my god! And finally... Oh, I guess I forgot to mention that he started using a Guitar Hero guitar for these attempts because of all the keyboard nonsense that was going on. Whatever works, works, I guess. In October of 2021, the seven-way tie in This Is The Only Level's Postless and Glitchless category was finally shattered thanks to multiple new discoveries being implemented into runs. Then, in March of 2022, Roblox8192 was able to finally answer TTOL's theoretical 150 cycle question thanks to the incredible full-game tool-assisted speedrun that she was able to pull together. Unfortunately, with one of the fastest button mashers in the entire speedrunning community being unable to complete left-right march within the currently necessary four frames of perfection, the 150 cycle has been deemed humanly unviable without even having to consider the immense difficulty of the task strategies present in the other 24 pre-cycle stages. However, the TAS has also shown that DHA's current record of 224.550 is far from the end for this category. There is still some room for the time to go lower, and it will be exciting to see if anyone is able to reach the game's current human limit of 224.425. Every single video game in existence does indeed have a hard limit on how fast it can be completed. And, for this is the only level, humans currently appear to be 374 frames away from that cap. Though it is now known that humans will unfortunately never be able to hit TTOL's theoretical maximum like they have in other video games like Dragster, it is thankfully also known that TTOL's human limit has yet to be achieved. Who knows, maybe in the future we will be talking about a crazy 7-way tie for TTOL's record at 2 minutes, 24 seconds, and 425 milliseconds. Thank you all very much for watching.